I first encountered Spade Jenkins when I was approached about becoming a part of the new Green Ring in uh, 19, I think it was 1998, 1997, 98, that he uh, approached me about uh, becoming part of the new ring cycle. And um, it was actually that, that's the story I always tell about Spate, that it was that experience that made me know that I wanted to work with him. Originally, he had offered me the role of Erda. And I, was, uh, I wasn't yet 30, and I didn't really know whether or not being a Wagnerian was something that I wanted to be or I was ready to be. Um, and and I, I, w I seriously considered Erda, but then I thought, you know, that's a very, very long commitment to be doing that role, and um, I'm just starting out, and there may be other things that I should be doing in the summertime. Um, but then he, he, when I turned down the Erda, he said, would you consider singing Fricka? And considering that I was about 28 at the time, I thought, I really need to give this some serious consideration. And he gave me a year and a half to decide, which I thought was remarkable. I thought, you know, it, it's really, um, it says something about a person when he's willing to wait on someone who's making a decision like that. He could have very easily gone on. There were many other women that could have sung that part. But he gave me a chance to decide. And after about a year and a half, he came to me uh, while I was doing... Um, Tales of Hoffman at the Met. I was singing Antonia's Mother. And uh, he came to my dressing room and he said, I really, I would love to know if you have any thoughts about the Fricka. And I said, you know, uh, Mr. Jenkins, I'm, I'm really sort of concerned because of my age. And uh, I don't know whether or not this is the right time for me to start singing Wagner. And he said, well, you know, I want you to sing your Fricka. I don't want you to try to be anybody else. I'm interested in what you have to say about this part. And I said to him, well, I'm, I'm really, really moved by that. But I have to say that the, the idea of working um, with, uh, I mentioned one colleague in particular who was scheduled to be working on this, the thought of working with this person was really, really tempting. And he said, well, I have to be honest with you, that person had to pull out of the production. Uh, and no one knew that. And he certainly didn't have to tell me that. But he told me anyway. And I thought, you know, at that moment, I want to work with somebody who has such integrity. Because he certainly could have said, yes, that was wonderful. That would be a fantastic experience for you. And then I would find out two, three months down the line this person was no longer in the production. But he didn't. And I thought, you know, you have integrity and honesty. And I, I, I would very much like to, to try my hand at this with you at the helm. And... Uh, and that was the beginning of our relationship. Spade Jenkins is the single most involved general manager I have ever encountered. I have never been in a situation, whether it be the Ring Cycle or Carmen or Italian Girl in Algiers or Falstaff, where the, the general manager actually sits in the room with you from the bit first rehearsal to the last. Um, there's actually, I'm sure people have told you that there is a chair designated for spate in the rehearsal space between the conductor and the director. Um, and some people might consider that odd or off-putting, but considering the fact that the man has an encyclopedic knowledge of opera, an incredible passion, and the, one of the most supportive souls I've encountered, it really makes the experience feel more familial and, uh, and very safe. And really wonderful things can happen in that kind of atmosphere. So I think that, especially with the ring cycle, where he really, that's really his stuff, he has always had wonderful things um, to, to uh, wonderful bits of input that have really kind of illuminated what we've done. And he's given, uh, I know he's given us many, many wonderful history lessons that are, that are you know, we look forward to those moments. Um, because he's sort of a he's, a, he's a factor in the room that kind of brings everything together. He's sort of an emulsifier. And, I, uh, and I've, I've always appreciated that about him. Spate is one of the last gentlemen. He, uh, 
he opens the door for a lady, and he uh, he's he he's incredibly warm, and he's in, he's um, he's never forgotten the single most important ingredient in a successful musical endeavor, and that is well a successful theater endeavor, uh, and that is the audience. He has never ever forgotten his audience for not one moment. Uh, he thinks about his audience when he chooses repertoire, of course, and he thinks about his audience when he chooses artists to be involved. But he also has an incredible desire to make their experience a total experience. So regardless of the level of patron that is coming to an opera, they get a wonderful level of attention. Um, when the renovation happened for the Opera House, uh, several years ago, Spate made sure that every tiny, tiny bit of attention was paid to how the audience would feel in this renovation because they were renovating uh, not just backstage but also the, the 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 audience and all of the amenities, you know, where they eat and get drinks and where they use the bathroom. And one of the things that I, the stories that I loved was that Spate told me he went through two contractors regarding the bathrooms, the ladies' rooms in particular, because they refused to paint the bathroom peach. And he wanted a peach bathroom because ladies look best in a peach light when they are looking in the mirror. And he wanted his ladies to feel good about themselves. And not only that, he put a hundred bathroom stalls out for the audience. That's quite something. And he made sure that, for instance, there was an entry door and an exit door, so there was no log jam to keep the, the intermissions running long. These are just you know, little things that he makes sure is available to his audience. Um, and also, I've never, ever come to the theater to do a show where Spate was not present, and really, really honestly present, where he's not just physically there, he's emotionally and mentally there and invested. And if a new person walks into the, into the lobby and Spate's never seen them before, he'll walk up to them and say, hello, my name is Spate Jenkins. I'm the general manager of the opera company. Thank you so much for coming. We're so glad you're here. And he makes people welcome. And then after a show is over, he stands in, he, go, he goes to their lecture hall and he takes questions and answers. Uh, he takes questions and answers. He, ta he takes, he has a question and answer. Okay, after the show is over, he goes to the lecture hall and he does a question and answer session that lasts as long as there are questions. And he will take questions if it's, if they're good or if they're comments that aren't so good, he'll be there for everybody. And he will take stock in what people ask him and statements that people make. Um, so I think he's, he is an extraordinary uh, force for good, not just in Seattle, but in the industry. And I've, uh, I, I, I can't thank him enough for what he's done. I feel the audience is extraordinarily involved in Seattle. Not only because physically the way the audience is, uh, the way the, the seats have been designed, in the, re, in, in, the, in the theater since its uh, renovation, it's as if the audience is being scooped up and presented to the stage. So there is a real connection there. And I have, I've, I've, I've certainly felt at the Met because I've been at the Met for so long since I began, a real connection to the audience. But I would have to say if I had to choose a second home, um, opera audience, opera, opera company, it would have to be Seattle. And I always feel extraordinarily welcome there as a singer, and I think that we all do. And I think there's a reason that so many singers um, actually physically make their second homes in Seattle, because it's a very welcoming place and it's a welcoming house. I remember when, when, I, when, I did my, when I did Carmen um, in Seattle, which was a remarkable experience and really wonderful because we did that show post 9-11 when people were um, 
when people were very worried and, and, and houses were canceling shows. Um, they were shortening, uh, they were shortening runs and, and it, was, it was a very, very difficult time. And we did that, Carmen, at that point the house, the, it was uh, the first opera they did in the house post-renovation. And I'll never forget Spate calling me and saying, you know, we have 13 shows scheduled, of which I was doing, um, we have 12 shows scheduled, pardon me, as, as I, and I was doing seven of those shows. And he said, um, we have sold out all the shows, and we would like to add another. Are you willing to do that? And I thought that was remarkable. That show sold 99%. We were selling a standing room for that show. And it was really a wonderful moment because all of us were very invested in it. And, um, and Spate had been so incredibly supportive, especially since considering his need to be in the, in the rehearsal space all, at all times. He, uh, he, at one point when we were rehearsing the second act, he humored me because I asked him, I said, look, when we rehearse the love scene in the second act, I don't think that we can really get what we want unless we have the ability to experiment which is not something you can do with an audience. So I would like everyone out of the rehearsal space, except the Jose, who was Paul Charles Clark, myself, and the director. No music staff, and, 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 and he said, well, certainly you don't mean me. I said, yes, wait, I mean you. And he was so darling, because he's absolutely, I won't be there, I won't be there, you can do whatever you need to do, we'll see it later. And it was just, it was wonderful that he was so accommodating, and he's always been that way. Whenever it means that his, his artists are going to feel more confident and more supported, he will do whatever is necessary to make that happen. And I think that that is marvelous. And I'm not talking about little frivolous things. I'm talking about the things that, that artists need to feel confident enough to really take a risk. And when we feel that confidence, anything can happen. And Spate in Seattle Opera is most certainly the center of that support.